Greetings to you all. Thank you for coming along to this video. This is the end of times here on July 18th, 2024. I pray and trust that you are all well. Now, I wanted to come on briefly, hopefully briefly, and do this video um, in regards to some news I've just uh, seen when I came home from work. And I find it very interesting. And for some reason, my mind went to the verse... I couldn't remember whereabouts it was, but I, I knew it was in Zechariah somewhere. And I remember Ch Dr. Chuck Missler speaking about when the beast takes a wound and it looks like he's wounded to the death, but rises up to give the impression that he is anti-Christos in place of Christ, anti-Christ. He is mimicking Jesus Christ that the first beast is killed and the second one arises in his place very confusing but it shouldn't be if, if you study through and um, as Dr Chuck Miseroy used to say if you master the like Daniel the well the whole book of Daniel I would say just just study it and understand it um, parts of Zechariah will help you to understand the book of Revelation and this coming beast. Now, God is speaking to Zechariah and he's saying here, Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock, shouting, you know, just firmly giving this point over to Zechariah. And I, I'm thinking that who was the idle shepherd that leave the flock? He, he left the flock. That makes me think of Judas for some reason. He was one of the apostles who left to deal dastardly against Jesus Christ and make the preparations with the Pharisees to betray Jesus. Um, and I believe that is... Uh, and alluding to that and I read further and it, and it says well the Lord says the sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye his arm shall be clean dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened now it says shall be this is going to be a future occurrence happening and I believe this is in reference to the beast that's coming woe to the idle shepherd that is a re reference to Satan who wants to be seen as an idol and a false shepherd to the flock to pull people away from salvation in Jesus Christ and you, you see it's, it's a spiritual war in the world everybody's being tossed to and fro to the camp of Satan and to the camp of Christ and it, putting it bluntly and who are you going to choose? Uh, that That's the, the big war we face when you read through Ephesians 6, how we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but the principalities of powers in wickedness and high places, of wickedness in high places. I'm paraphrasing, unfortunately, I'm sorry, but I believe... The news story that I'm going to read in a moment and go through with you, I believe it's going alongside this, not with the intent to say it's happening now with a certain person. Uh, of course, I'm not saying a certain person is the beast. Not yet. Well, first of all, the church is still here. And there is no beast just yet. But I believe in this new story I'm about to read, it reflects a trend that shall be, I believe, similar or getting people to get into that kind of mindset of a future worship of a future political individual. Now, let's have a look at the news and I think you'll see what I mean. So this is Sky News I'm reading from, and I'll get right into it. Donald Trump supporters wear fake 
bandages after shooting. Elsewhere at the convention, West Virginia, Virginia Governor Jim Justice's pet dog steals a show after appearing on stage with him during a speech. Um, Donald Trump supporters are wearing a pretend ear bandages uh, to the Republican convention in solidarity with him after an assassination attempt on the former president. Very, very, very interesting. Mr. Trump has been wearing a patch over his ear since the shooting in Pennsylvania on Saturday. His right ear. What did it say in Zechariah? His right eye shall be utterly darkened. Now, I'm not trying to make connections here with Donald. I've got to say his name like that just in case it gets picked up by the algorithms. It's not in con conjunction with Donald at all. But I'm just using him as and what his fans are doing as a trend I believe that will continue and build momentum for somebody else who is coming whose eye shall be utterly darkened. And I'll go further with um, the eye being utterly darkened a bit further on in the video, but let's stick with the story. So I find this very interesting. Um, several attendees of the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee were seen with similar white bandages taped to their heads on Thursday. And then it just goes through um, what happened to uh, to Donald <laughs> Wall nearly um, on, on that day. And you can see very interesting, very bizarre. Why are they doing this? Now, I said I was going to speak about a bit further about the um, the right eye. And I want to show you something. Bear with me. Now, you may have all seen this. You may not have. But they all do the same thing. I once did this when I was in a band and I didn't know what it meant. I was just copying some other famous person. I didn't know what it meant. I just thought it looked cool. But they're all doing it. They're all part of something. The right eye shall be darkened. Do they read the Bible? Do they know, they know God's word? Now, this is strange. But it's also very true that they're all part of an occult, a cult, a, an organisation, as we know as the Illumin, you know, uh, I've got to be careful what I say on YouTube, but I do apologise. We know what the algorithms are like. So there are pictures of... You know, I mean, you can you could take it with a pinch of salt and you can just say, oh, well, they just had an accident. But let's have a look at this and see what you think. Now, this is an image of the current Pope. And what is that all about? Why would the Pope have a black eye? Why would he? Who would give the Pope a black eye? Oh, it's an accident. How can somebody as protected as the Pope have an accident where he just suffers a black eye? Yeah, you can see a bit of his face just um, maybe grazed there. And yeah, OK, it's the left eye. But it's, I find it very curious. This is the actor who played Iron Man. His name escapes me now, Downey, Robert Downey Jr., that's it. Black eye. Where are they all suddenly getting these black eyes from? Who's giving them black eyes? It's not just one person. It's many of them. And they all seem to be 
very proud of this black eye and for some reason it's all the left eye. Maybe they don't dare have it done to the, the right eye because that may be blasphemy against the person that they know who's going to arise. Now, why have they all got black eyes and all on the left eye? There is something in the occult world of initi initiations in the Illumin, you know what I mean, here's the symbol. And we've all seen it. It's part of the, the what they call the great architect of the universe who actually is Satan. He's the all-seeing eye. That's who they worship. So I'm trying not to spend too much time on this, but you get what I'm trying to say here. And people may say, well, it's all coincidence. They could have just had an accident. Oh, all the same eye. And people who you wouldn't think would just randomly get a black eye. You would think somebody getting a black eye a celebrity getting a black eye. Wow. You know, weren't they in a fight or anything? No, 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 no news about it. They just suddenly appear with black eyes. Where did they get them? Like I said, in the occult world, in the Illumin, mm, got a, sorry, the algorithms on YouTube, got to be careful. This is an initiation practice. I don't know what level they 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 do this at i don't know but i'm pretty sure some of them are right at the top called the 33rd degree or members of the royal arch which is the highest and they get the secret name which um chuck misler spoke dr chuck misler spoke about um in his uh when he was alive his video is still on youtube uh abaddon abaddon and you get that name in um in the book of revelation also known as apollyon like the god of destruction the destroyer this is all who they worship so you're thinking well preacher what are you trying to say are you trying to tell us that um mr mr donald is the is the beast is the antichrist no I'm just saying this is just going to simply go the way that it said it would go in the verse that we just read in uh, Zechariah. Dr. Chuck Misler alluded to a quite an interesting discovery that when people take the mark of the beast, when you read through Revelation 13, uh, chapter 13, verses 16 to 18, it tells you, oh, I may as well read it. That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? So let's go down, shall we? Write down Revelation 13, verses 16 to 18, right at the bottom there. And he causeth, who? The beast. All, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score and six, six hundred and sixty-six. So, what Dr. Chuck, Dr. Chuck Misler was uh, alluding to in what he said, I can't remember what video it is, or I'd send a link, but I'll, I'll put a link to the story on Sky News, or as always I do, so you can look for yourself. Dr. Chuck Misler said that maybe the reason why people take the mark is because people think this idle shepherd died for them. He rose from the dead for them and 
they don't choose to take the mark out of love. Oh, he died for me. Like we, we take the Holy Spirit into us. The Holy Spirit indwells in us and we're marked by the Holy Spirit and have eternal life for believing in the one who genuinely saved us. The one who's faithful and true, the Lord Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, the second member of the triune Godhead, the Tetragrammaton. What we're talking about here um, in the occult world and in the final uh, uh, verses of chapter 13 of the book of Revelation, we're looking at how this evil, unholy trinity comes about and a beast rises and then he's put down and he rises again and he's trying to mimic Christ and he demands worship by putting leverage onto it. Well, you can't have this and you can't have that unless you have this mark and you pay allegiance to me. Because you saw me rise from the dead. I'm powerful. I can squish you and all that stuff. And people will be scared and worship out of fear. Well, beloved, we know that we don't worship God out of fear. We fear him in reverence and respect. He's the heavenly father. We, re we love him and we respect him and fear him out of love. Satan has no problem throwing wrath upon us all every day. God doesn't just throw wrath upon everybody. If God threw wrath upon every sinner on this world, no one would be alive. Yes, he sent the flood. Eight people survived, Noah and his family. The rest perished. But there is another judgment coming, a great fire. And the world will be judged. It, the world will pass away with great noise and fervent heat. That's what the scripture says. So what am I trying to say? Is uh, Donald Antichrist? No. I'm saying that there's a trend going now. I believe it's kicked off now because of this attempted assassin. Mm, got to be careful the algorithms again on Donald. And I believe it can bring... Things like that can bring about an, an idol worship quite swiftly. I'm not saying Donald is the idol shepherd. I don't believe he is. But he's a forerunner. I would like to say that. Like um, back in 2019, 2020, that great so-called pestilence that I can't mention kind of caught everybody out and you know it caused a lot of hysteria and people just followed it and did what they had to do that's how the enemy wanted it and this is how trends work it's like a lockstep kind of situation where people start following one another and say hey this is a great idea hey that's a great idea Another word for that is jumping on the bandwagon. Everyone likes to get on that wagon and, and say, hey, this is a good idea, and wear a badge saying, I support the latest thing, just to be part of something, which is quite sad. But anyway, this is just my thought, really, and um, I found it quite interesting. I really do think that this is part and parcel of what's coming, and... It will be worshipped towards some individual who's coming in the future who really will be struck down and people will mourn after this first beast and a second one will rise asking or demanding worship or you cannot buy or sell and people will have to take a mark to pay allegiance to that fallen beast. Thank you for watching this video. I didn't want it to be this long, but it, it takes some um, going into. I didn't research this at all. I just paused the video and went places as I was thinking and just popped things up on the screen just to kind of expand on what I'm trying to say visually. 
I don't always like going by visuals, but sometimes it helps. Clearly, with the Lord's word, we don't need images, we don't need visuals, we just have his pure word. And if you will believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved, you and thy house. You will be indwelt with the Holy Spirit and you will have eternal life. God became a man to die, not just for you, for the entire world. Sin is paid for. The check, shall we say, has been written out. All you need to do is pick up that check and say, yes, Jesus paid it all for me. And I believe that he did. That's all you have to do is believe. Please visit my video, The Simplicity of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. It's about three minutes long. Three minutes out of your time. Watch it. Please watch it and please share it with those who need to know the truth of salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because time is running out. And by the way, if you're not saved and listening to this, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. You're not guaranteed your next breath. Everyone has a number. God knows it. We don't. So I urge you to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ before it's too late. Thank you for watching this video. I love you all. God bless you all. Bye for now.